So, hello there. My name is Michelle Floyd, and I will be presenting on the Sumerians' kings list, particularly the first ten kings. The kings list is basically the names and the reigns of most of the Sumerian kings, which goes from the beginning of history to about 1950 BC. The list is divided into before and after the flood, which we will also be getting into, and the Sumerian area is located in Mesopotamia, which is considered basically what is now the Middle East, also known as in the biblical terms of Babylonia. It's considered where Abraham began his wanderings, which is what brought most researchers and historians and people that came to come search this whole entire area for artifacts regarding the Bible and Jesus. The boundaries of Mesopotamia Mesopotamia extend over some of the modern lands of Syria and Iran, but also of Iraq. So, now we get into the kings list. So, before the flood, there were t eight kings. It starts with the kingship descending from heaven, going into Irudu, with the king Alulim leading for somewhere between... 28,800 years and 36,000 years. So also know that there is some ways that they're trying to figure out was it the years counted by how many days they ruled or just how they calculated their years. So after this, the king, the next king in Irudu was Aligar, who ruled from about 36,000 years or 10,800 years. So the kingship would have stayed in the city-state Irudu between 46,800 years to 64,000 years. So there is some debate about which is true. The kingship then went to, please bear with me if I mess up some of these names, Enma Galana, who reigned between 28,000 years in Batadibira, or for 64,000 years, which there is that issue to debate, of how many years it is because the king's list is so old and some of it's been hard to decipher. The next king of Betadabira is Emen Galana. So their names are also very similar, who would have ruled between 28,000 years and 36,000 years, or not 36,000 years. That's actually going to be Dumzi of Betadabira, who ruled for 36,000 years. After that, there is some debate on the name of the king of whether it is Edmund Durana or Edmund Duranki of Sippar, who also was the only king who had the kingship for about 21,000 years. The final king before the flood was Sh the Ubarututu of Shurupak. And also, please realize that because these names are so old, it is very hard to figure out the perfect translations of how to pronounce them. But after that, that is when the flood came. So the flood is considered to be sent from the gods, has been considered the flood myth. It is also believed that the gods that found the five cities and the, who chose the, where the kingship would originate from the very beginning. They also, the Sumerians were also believing that the king from Shrupak received the first kingship from heaven right after the flood subsided. But the list does not have much proof until it was received in Kish. There is very little records regarding the flood, which is why it's also considered like the flood myth. It relates back to about the same timeline of the story of Noah's Ark from the Bible, except the Sumerians' god was the deity Enki, who... As said from the book by Kramer, the decision to take in by the assembly of the gods to send a deluge and destroy the seed of mankind. So once the Sumerians that survived to prove themselves to the gods, they let them go back to the land to let the kingship descend from heaven again. So there is some relation on whether or not it's from the Bible or the Sumerians, but there is proof in history that there was a flood. Just the official records are not so clear because they're so old and m so much time has passed. So, after the flood, the kingships of the Sumerians began again. It started in the city-state of Kish, and it was King Gar who reigned for 1,200 years. The following king was in the city of Gwar as well. It was Gola Nidaba Enipad. 
And after that, Kish continued to have 21 more kings, which was about 23 kings for a total of 24,510 years before the city of Kish was defeated in a large battle and taken to Iana. But that is the first 10 kings. Now see, the kings had a lot of influence on the Sumerian culture as well. The different kingships produced different results. From the records, from the very beginning of the Sumerian king looks, there has always been war and armies. That's how the Sumerians gathered so much of their land and had the people that helped work their land as well. There's also records of language, of where there was dialects, and how there's also Semite dialects, which is who would have been the main people that the Sumerians would have fought against. The Sumerians also had a society where they had a very strong connection to the gods, which kept their kings in check. So priests would be able to basically decide and have a council on whether or not to follow the king's orders, basically, of whether or not they would go to war. So the priesthood kept the kingship in check and helped keep it balanced by also the people. And that is my presentation.